I was 12 years old and singing in the shower when I heard the knock on the door that would change my life forever. Sean Oi, hey, you're pretty good at singing. You know, once you get into high school, you should join the choir. That was my older cousin, Christina. She was one of my first fans. Even though I wasn't a big fan of the stage, I did love to sing. I remember my first performance on stage was under these huge bright auditorium lights and I was singing about nature. Mist on the river, cool breath of morn, still rising up from the dawn. Born on a whisper, fed by a song, earth, sky, and river meet as one. And choir became an oasis of peace for me. But even so, it was still high school. In my sophomore year of high school, I began getting bullied. But what was even worse was I was scared and confused when my dad was rushed to the hospital on October 30th, 2016. He had a coma after having a stroke and a brain aneurysm. As I waited to hear from the doctor, anxiously tearing through my mind to remember the last thing that I said to my dad, my family arrived, and my extended family arrived, and my extended, extended family arrived. But even though they were there to wrap me in their arms and tell me everything would be okay, I felt more helpless each time someone told me that. So I decided to hide myself before I would embarrass myself. I cried myself in the restroom. And I just looked at myself in the mirror, this sad face, and sang the first thing that came to mind. I performed this song nine nights ago with my choir on stage. Say no words, it is too soon. Say no words out loud. But wrap your quiet arms around Hide us in your cloud Music became my lifeline And over the next months and years as my dad recovered from his stroke Still half paralyzed but with his immigrant resilience still able to come home on a wheelchair I had many magical experiences The first being my first onstage solo it was a Christmas song, just two months after that night in the hospital. Midway through my choir's rendition of That's Christmas to Me by Pentatonix, my little tenor voice, dead center in the middle of puberty, sang in the spotlight for the first time. I listen for the thud of reindeer walking on the roof As I fall asleep to lullabies, the morning's coming soon The only gift I'll ever need is the joy of family. For the first time ever, I felt my life being lived through music. My dad's near-death experience, my family's suffering, my own suffering, my heartaches. They were all wrapped into how I performed that song. After that performance, I thought to myself, hey, if I could lead 40 other singers in the middle of a song, then I could lead my peers in school. So I joined student government. And then I decided I wanted to help out my local community in the San Gabriel Valley. So I joined the board of the National Honor Society and volunteered my weekends at the food shelter in Alhambra. Music became a virtuous cycle of growth for me. And even though my bullies still threw their sticks and stones and words, I had something stronger now, a purpose. I picked up guitar and taught myself how to play, I sang love songs and guitar duets. I asked a girl out to senior prom. I emceed for school assemblies and I even made a rock band called Cutting Onions because, and I'll apologize in advance, school made us cry. Eventually, I started landing leading roles for the musical production that we put on at our school. And I learned that there's so much work and there's a never ending process into telling stories that need to be told together. I started to fall in love with the work. When I graduated, I also knew that I was on to bigger, much bigger stages. 
I chose music production because I wanted to become an independent artist and then I also reasoned that the visual arts side of my major would help me to produce content, which I started posting on YouTube. Six months into college, when the pandemic hit, I saw many things fall out of place. The collapse of academic structures tore into the social fabric of music and performing and theater, all things that I wanted to pursue in college. I have everything listed out of what I'm going to do today. A lot of the students will, you know, be spending their days and nights here just studying for midterms. And there was no more open mics or musical performances or talent shows or even just choirs. If you see my fashion from stone, but even so, for each thing that fell out of place, I tried to put something in place. On June 2nd, 2020, I began songwriting. It started as an hour each so day. I think I got day one down. This is what I call, I wanna find love. With my pen, my notepad, and my guitar. Gotta hope that I am stronger than all the fears that are knocking on my door. And eventually, I started an Instagram live stream to share my own original songs. And then I started having Asian American guests on who wanted to share their music as well. Of course, we were trying to be the next Steve Aoki's or Rich Bryant's or Wong Fu's, but at the core, each of us just wanted to be in the driver's seat of our lives at a time where every roadblock, then imaginable, and then some, was in our way. Live stream after live stream, I found myself more interested in the fire and the drive behind each of my guest musicians' reasons to create and to be an artist. So I started an interview segment. My first guests were from UCSD, but degrees of separation began melting as I networked with graduates, students from other colleges and universities, and up-and-coming songwriters in the Asian Creative Network. I learned that most of us only had prior music experience with stuff like high school choir, maybe church, and piano or violin lessons growing up. But even so, with our limited experience, it was clear that we were the lucky ones. The safe spaces that we once had to perform, make music, and express ourselves in different ways was being washed away like sandcastles during high tide. Funding was getting cut at schools, and music wasn't a viable career in families like mine. So I saw the next generation and their problem that they wouldn't have a home for their creativity in the next coming years. I decided to use my live stream to fundraise and bring awareness to this problem. So I posted on the Asian Creative Network and after dozens of comments of charities and hundreds of glorious internet likes, a comment by Jennifer Zhang, an actor and now good acquaintance, led me to connecting to the creative team at East West Players. The more I learned about them, I learned that their legacy was just amazing. It was founded in 1965 in part by Mako, who I grew up knowing as the infinitely lovable and wise voice of Uncle Iroh. They were also responsible for bringing up Asian youth like Dante Bosco the Prince Zuko. And most of all, they were only a 20 minute drive away from where I grew up in the San Gabriel Valley. I knew if I could make a change there, then I could make a change in my community too. And as the motivation for me to do this event came up more and more, I realized it wouldn't be easy. I was inexperienced at talent acquisition, event planning, completely illiterate with copywriting, ignorant about marketing, but even so, with all of these things, I had a purpose, and I knew what I had to do. It took two months of finding performers, fundraising, posting on social channels, teaching myself Photoshop, Lightroom, GoFundMe, and everything else to get to December 18th, 2020. At 12 p.m., I did sound checks for an hour, and by 1 p.m., I was live. For the next five hours, eight guests and I shared my digital stage. We drew art, we performed music, poetry, talked about social activism and change, and I found purpose in this whole whirlwind of an event I stirred up for myself. When I clocked out at 7 p.m., my mom congratulated me. 
she saw how I'd been working so hard on this project for the past months and working so hard as a musician in the past years and I think she finally understood what music meant to me. By the end of December, I raised $1,500 for the East West Players and I asked for my donations to be used in music and theater youth workshops. I believe that in the future, as an Asian American community, we have a lot of unexpected obstacles coming our way. But like the immigrant families that we hailed from, we have the ability to adapt and we have that creativity already within us. As an activist, I want to be part of events like Identity LA and the Gold House Gala. As a musician, I want to keep songwriting and creating music and producing. As a video creator, I want to tell stories that really need to be told. And as a poet, I want to keep empowering and inspiring our generation and our community. My life goal is to lead my generation of artists to be activists in the next phases of Asian excellence, starting in the San Gabriel Valley and in Los Angeles. I also believe that my talents and skills are ready for bigger projects and teams, which is why I'm applying to be a part of the creative family at the Pacific Bridge Arts Scholarship. My name is Keyshawn Tran, and this is why I'm passionate about pursuing a career in the musical arts. Thank you.